From the fast action of the trading pit to the power brokers making the headlines, you'll hear it all on the Traders Network Show with your host, Michael Yorba. All right. Michael interviews the front page titans about the latest in trading tools and market trends in stocks, commodities, bonds, forex, and derivatives. The Traders Network helps you stay ahead of the curve and delivers tomorrow's trade today. Now, here's your host, Michael Yorba. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, for the next couple of segments, I've got David Drake, founder and chairman of the Soho Lofts Media Group, on the show with us. Uh, David, welcome back to the show. How have you been? Oh, fine, thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Pleasure being with you, Michael. My pleasure. You know, you're a world traveler. Give us a a, a, a little example of what your travel schedule looks like and, and, and what you've been doing these days. Well, we represent and work with family offices and uh, institutional investors on a global basis. And recently, we have some clients from Asia, family offices, and in Thailand that have been asking me to go out there literally once a month to talk about mega trends, the economy, um, as well as cryptocurrencies, 3D printing, and crowdfunding. So I've been going out there for quite a few times the last few months. So, yes, I've been putting the miles on my SkyMiles account, which uh, <laughs> it's almost become a hobby now. Well, right, you're darn near by a fleet of cars with those travel miles, I'm sure. All right, let's let's get into okay. this. Uh, the crowdfunding is uh, what's going on in that sector, and as you know, you, you're 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 in it worldwide, not just domestically. It's been doubling every year. Where where are we going to in dollar size for the types of transactions that uh, uh, that are occurring in this sector? Well, um, the, the only report on how large the uh, market was was from a group called Mass Solution in 2012, who had estimated that uh, it was around $2.7 billion in 2012. And the estimations were around $5.1 billion last year and around $10 billion this year by myself. Um, I think they're going to be a little higher last year for about around $6 billion, around $10 billion this year because... There are two companies specifically in a new industry emerging really quickly in crowdfunding. Two companies specifically are in debt called uh, Prosper and Lending Club that actually quadrupled in size since 2012, and they are probably going to do around $5.5 billion this year alone in peer-to-peer -peer loans. Yeah, in essence, you can go online and get up to $35,000 loans, non-secured loans, through an application process online from other peers. Now, is that both uh, of them Prosper and Lending Club, or is that the Lending Club that's really leaning in that direction? Both of them, are, both of them are in the same process, doing the same process, allowing thirty-five thousand dollars loans online. Nice thing is, you can go online there and say, "Hey, I'm I want to have a second honeymoon. Can I get a five thousand dollar loan?" Which the bank would never lend you, right? So online, you can go and get loans for things that a traditional bank would never ever have given you money for. Um, Lending Club, obviously, is the biggest one. They're probably projected to do $4.5 billion this year. And Prosper just broke a billion-dollar mark uh, six months ago. So we're looking at them to stand for more than 50% of the industry capital. But the emerging markets that is taking off, like light fire uh, here, is real estate crowdfunding. People investing in real estate that they can do the due diligence online and transfer funds online towards projects. And uh, we have been tracking over 100 of these real estate sites the last couple of years under one of our publications called Times Realty News. And we're starting to see more and more institutional family offices looking at this uh, area because it reduces overhead and it facilitates uh, investors to find your project and review it online. And right now, we've seen over $2 billion in real estate being affected the last 18 months from the top 15 real estate platforms. And now, and some of the platforms out there are Fundrise and uh, uh, that have done really, really well from D.C. An upcoming co company called Crowd Alliance is getting into real estate, which is focused on, uh, on family offices out of New York. And we have seen some of them raised up to $500 million through crowdfunding just the last few months. So 
So I'm estimating that affected real estate is closer to three billion by year end, and we're going to look see this probably double or potentially triple next year. So yes, we'll see crowdfunding go to about twenty billion next year, thanks to these two mega trends and the emergence of real estate being facilitated online just makes a lot of sense. What I'd like to tell you, Michael, is the real estate portion is interesting because you have a real asset. You know, any startup there, you know, the startup can just walk out the door and their all the money is gone and there's no assets left. But with real estate, A, you know, you can analyze a real estate project from across the world because it's fairly similar. It's a building. I have improved land. And if something goes wrong, the building doesn't disappear. It doesn't walk away. So there's a more comfortable aspect of real estate, including the tax advantages of putting money into real estate in the U.S. Yeah. I think more and more of the developers out there are getting used to seeing that, you know, they can come to groups like us and say, hey, how do we explore and get educated on what's happening in the real estate market? We're a family office. We're sitting on half a billion dollars of real estate. How can we leverage that? So we analyzed all the softwares out there and analyzed all the players, and we guide people to see where the opportunity lays that might fit them the best. Unfortunately, it's a very early stage right now, so most platforms are rejecting close to 90 to 95% of the deal flow they see. But that also shows uh, opens up opportunities. You know, we have companies like uh, uh, a company called like Fund America, who's been doing really well, allowing people to get software solutions to be in the space directly on website. Now, I've been talking about crowd, uh, David. I've been talking about crowdfunding for a couple of years now, and I wanted to find out what's the big flip. What what, what was the triggering device that all of a sudden made these institutions, these family offices, uh, venture capital companies that normally w- when we first start, started talking about it, it was like, oh, no, never, not going to touch it. Now all of a sudden they're all in on the game. What, what, what changed? You know what? In 2010, we started having more people retiring than getting into the workforce. And that will continue for another 40 years. I talk, I talk as an economist on what's happening on a global basis, and that was a trigger showing that the pension funds now have to make up for the losses they made over the great financial crisis. And if they've allocated money for st- stocks, the public stocks, private equity, <clears throat> um, then they're probably not going to allocate more money to the stock market, which is volatile. And then we allocated money for the bonds and treasuries, which is at world lows, you know, uh, returns. So consequently, how are they going to make up for the losses and get a higher return around 8 to 10%? They have to look at alternative, real, uh, alternative investments. And the most common alternative investment area is going to be real estate. So we're expecting real estate to have a huge growth uh, opportunities over the next 20, 30 years as more and more institutions are going to start allocating more money in this area. And to answer your question, because of that pressure, more and more of these processes inevitably are going online. And, uh, and to give you a parallel, in 1993, as you will see Wikipedia shows you, there were 633 websites. That same disruptive opportunity is happening for real estate and the institutional and family offices because by 1996, AOL went public. So right now, people start, re- start realizing, well, wait a minute, why can I not look at this property online? Why do you have to FedEx me a package? And why do I have to pay 400 bucks an hour for my lawyer to look at the legal documents and have her assistant copy it for 500 bucks? when I can just create a data room online. It's a revolution of everything going online, and it's disrupting it. And the pension funds and the family offices that we're talking to, they recognize that. So we're using the technology of a data room where you know, all the documentation is it's on one spot online. And this facilitation online, this movement online, is just becoming more and more efficient. And that's where they're looking at it and embracing it faster because you're getting accustomed to it and used to sharing documents online. 
So it's just it, the process that slowly is happening right now. So really, what to connect the dots on that, it, what I'm getting is it's just the overall process of education with guys like you and guys like me who have been talking about this for the last, well, since the JOBS Act got passed and prior to that because we knew it was coming, uh, and, and just getting the institutions, dragging them, kicking and screaming in some cases into the 21st century about how uh, you can use cap- new forms of capital formations that reduce the, the restrictions they've had to, to deal with on uh, um, the other forms of capital formation, the, the tried and true ones that they've been dealing with over the, the millennia, so to speak. Am I getting that right? Yes. And it's just an educational process. Yeah. Eventually, you know, and, and, and San Francisco Pension Fund will one day go online and look at a hedge fund, third hedge fund, and eventually one day be able to say, okay, well, why don't we allocate this person X, Y, Z? And most of these transactions can happen online. And that will take time because, you know, we're used to seeing people face to face. Let me ask you some real hard questions on this stuff because I'm really interested in this crowdfunding thing. Title II has been a real problem. Because we've been out there, all of a sudden, you know, then we're going to do it. Then FINRA and SEC say, oh, no equity. We've got to figure out how to, how to work this. And they pull it back. Somebody gets into a real estate crowdfunding project, right? An accredited investor right now, I think, is primarily focused on those, right, David? Right, that's correct. Okay, what do they get? Well, right now, for crowd the real estate groups using crowdfunding as the trigger is that they actually automate the process online. They're using existing old laws called Regulation D, 506 B and C, which has been in place for decades, allowing them to raise money online towards a real estate project and they get shares. But some companies don't do shares like equity. Some companies do debt. They, you will focus on hey, you bought a new house and, uh, well, or you bought a piece of land and you want to improve it as a construction team. Now you need an 18-month loan to pay for the labor and the cost of building it out. So they'll do short-term debt notes because the research we found shows that four out of five deals on the crowdfunding for real estate plat- platforms online are debt notes between one hundred fifty to $350,000 uh, in, in size. So it's still very small. But you have these anomalies of, you know, Prodigy Networks in New York taking down a $120 million real estate project, a skyscraper, and raised $40 million in equity just four or five months ago. So you're going to start seeing more of these bigger tickets happening in 2015 and 2016. But for the time being, you know, unfortunately, the deals are small, very small. Uh, and a lot of the family institutions looks at it like, well, it's not really for us, but we like the automation process. We like the fact that we can actually streamline it and allow data data be shared online smoothly. And I, I want to clarify something, Michael. The Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, the Jobs Act, that was signed by Obama in 2012, April 5th specifically, it has seven underlying laws, and one of those seven did not pass yet. It's called crowdfunding for equity. And it won't become law to 2016. What's confusing is you can do crowdfunding for equity today under old laws, but you just can't take money from poor people. You have to be credited, which means you have at least $20,000 in salary. So even if you are telling clients as a broke dealer how to invest your money, if you don't earn enough money yourself, you would not be allowed to invest in real estate. Right. Uh, David, we gotta, David, the David, 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 yeah. David, we, we got to take a break right now, but I, I, I'm really engrossed in this conversation. Let's let's take a break. We'll come back on the other side and we'll dig uh, dig deeper into what's going on in the institutional side, uh, internet uh, and enterprise crowdfunding, and then cross funding. Something new we've talked about on the show. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with David Drake. He is the founder and chairman of the Soho Lost Media Group.
from the North Texas Traffic Center in Dallas. We did have an accident, 635 LBJ Freeway westbound at Plano Road, but that has just recently cleared up. Still seeing a little bit of a delay in that area, and we did have a problem out in Bedford 183 in that express lane heading eastbound just before Brown Trail, but that is also cleared up as well. Still finding a bit of a slowdown out on 30 heading westbound between Dolphin Road and 35E. You're adding just about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm Heather Anderson with your KFXR Traffic. Hearing is believing on Sirius XM's new Joel Osteen radio. Sirius XM has packages starting at just $5.99 a month, so you'll get the ultimate entertainment and inspiration. Go to SiriusXM.com slash J-O radio or call 844-80-RADIO for details. Hey Dallas, where do you go to hear the edgiest uncensored talk and cutting edge local music? DeepLMOnAir.com. Whether you're looking for a good laugh, honest sports commentary, or DFW's best bands, DeepLMOnAir.com has got you covered. Deep Elm On Air is located in the heart of Deep Elm, where you can find the best local music, local businesses, and local people. This ain't your grandpa's radio. Heck, it ain't even radio. It's Deep Elm On Air. Check them out at DeepElmOnAir.com today. I'm Dr. James, founder of Diamond Physicians, a concierge medicine practice located in Dallas, Texas. Our Diamond 360 advanced physical exam has been created for people like you, we live a high-stress, fast-paced life. Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. experiences a life-changing heart attack or debilitating stroke. Negative stress tests and normal cholesterol levels do not exclude you. Half of all fatal heart attacks occur without warning. Diamond goes beyond traditional medicine with the Diamond 360 Advanced Physical Exam, proven to prevent heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. Contact Diamond now at 214-395-3491. That's 214 214- 395-3491 or visit our website at diamondphysicians.com to take the diamond challenge. If your Diamond 360 reveals perfect health, receive a full refund. Your loved ones will thank you. Call Big D Cats Catamarans for fun corporate events and private parties. Come celebrate with your special clients and build your team. Bring up to 85 of your clients and friends for dinner and dancing on the yacht just minutes away from your office at Pier 121 Marina on Lake Louisville. Come sailing, golfing, target shooting for a fun yet elegant evening and cruise. You have to see this beautiful 70-foot catamaran. Check out the website at BigDCats.com. And to book your event today, call 214-705-3772. More than the sum of our parts. He caught it with one hand. Touchdown, Red Raiders. More than stamina, talent, and strength. It's intercepted at the goal line. We are a team. Inside 30, 25, 20. Down to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Red Raiders. This is, this, this is our year. This is Red Raider football. Next up for the Red Raiders, they face the TCU Horned Frogs in Fort Worth Saturday, October 25th. Kickoff is at 2.30. The pregame show starts at 1.30 on 1190 a.m. From the Mini Cooper Weather Center, today morning clouds gives way to afternoon sun, high of 81. Tonight, fair skies, low of 60. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. She didn't just visit the sick and poor. She moved in with them because they needed help. Mother Teresa couldn't do it all, but she gave her all. Compassion. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host, broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR, 1190 AM, iHeart Media Studios, and worldwide through Yorba Media. All right, we're speaking with David Drake. He is the founder and chairman of Soho Lost Media Group. And what we've been doing is really drilling down into some of the, uh, uh, the minutia of what's going on in the crowdfunding industry. It's moved from nothing literally nothing to a $10 billion industry with projections of over a trillion by 2025. And um, the real estate industry sector, David, you were just talking about that, how it's come from out of nowhere into mainstream. We're getting family offices, institutions, pension funds, things of that nature, endowments moving in this direction. A lot of money is going into this direction but w- what I'm trying to find out, if, if title to uh, equity ownership in a real estate project, say you've got a commercial project going on, has not been passed. You just mentioned debt is one of the things that, that people get. So they, if they invest, they don't get a T-shirt 
they get a percentage ownership in a debt instrument in a commercial venture if they're investing in real estate. Did I get that correct? Yes, four to five deals a day, are, are research has shown, are occurring in this space because they're first out to have a first position. On the equity side, we see one out of five deals happening, and they're riskier. There are more complicated underwriting methods for it, so we're seeing less of those uh, compared to the debt version. That's correct. Okay. What? Well, that we get. Everybody is wondering what you know because if they've done any research at all, most of the time, it, you know, it ends up being a donation, and nobody wants to donate money and end up with see somebody else, you know, reap the benefits of the project and not get a fair share of it. Now we get it. It's a little clearer now. They get debt, which is first position beyond uh, some of the riskier positions you can take with that. Let's get into uh, one of the other topics you wanted to bring to the table today, intranet and enterprise crowdfunding. What is this? Well, we wrote, I wrote an article for Forbes, and I also write for Huffington Post on a regular basis, including you know, 40 other publications. And I try to educate people on what's possible and what's happening in the world. Mm-hmm. And IBM, literally uh, a year and a half ago, started doing crowdfunding uh, internally. And what they actually did was they said, okay, here's $100,000, and here's a group of 55 people you can now you get now allocated a portion of the hundred thousand dollars that you can vote on which project internally at IBM level that you want to put the money in, and they've actually done three different campaigns internally, and researched to review how employees are allocating and acting with allocation of capital towards different projects internally, from you know a division getting a new printer to the cafeteria in an office being uh, improved. And that's the space where enterprises on a corporate level are reviewing how they can use this mechanism to empower their employees and also allocate more and more money to areas that are potentially of more concern. So they've found some really interesting um, results from that. And uh, to find that article, I think you should just do search for David Drake, IBM, and Forbes. And they should be popping up from that point of view. But we'll be talking about these things at the November 13 event we have in New York City. They're very focused on natural resources, oil and gas, like from your home city, but as well as real estate and these enterprise solutions for family offices specifically. All right. Um, real quick on that one before we move on to uh, cross-crowdfunding. The... Uh, the entities you're talking about are are they finding it uh, easier to do this in house? Uh, like they'll get their attorneys to go ahead and put a crowdfunding package together for our employees, and let's do, see if they'd like to invest in this division over here. Or are they outsourcing it to specialists? Well, right now they're doing it internally, and they're not doing it for equity. They're not allowing them to invest ownership. Mm-hmm. What they're doing is saying. You know, here's hundred thousand dollars. What do you want to improve in your company? IBM being a you know potentially having thirty thousand, forty thousand employees or high more. You know, wanted to see how that would work between different divisions and people who have never met each other. But they don't get a reward per se. Uh, their reward is more like they're giving a donation, like a charity, and they just feel good about themselves that they help somebody within the organization somewhere else. Okay. Hope that clarifies that. Yeah, it, that helps a lot. Uh, cross crowdfunding. Uh, this seems that it might be something recent that's come to the surface on uh, how to use crowdfunding in a more sophisticated fashion. What is it? Uh, the phenomenon of cross crowdfunding is you have a crowdfunding platform like Patch of Land that does a lot of that only does debt notes for real estate, who is now considering to raise their money on another crowdfunding platforms. Uh, mechanism called Seed Invest. Seed Invest helps companies raise money just like um, Crowd Alliance does um, by offering corporations to raise money in exchange for uh, equity or ownership shares. The interesting thing here in the cross crowdfunding is Patch of Land is a crowdfunding platform for real estate, allowing people to buy these notes and get an 8 10% return on their money. Them as a corporation are now going on seed invest to raise more money for their own equity ownership of the platform. So you're seeing a crowdfunding platform using another crowdfunding platform 
to raise money just on the corporate level for themselves and not for the real estate projects per se that they actually have on the platform. And that's what we're going to start seeing more and more where, you know, the mechanisms with firms like Crowd Alliance and Seed Invest and CrowdFunder, three of the leading platforms out there, they have broker dealer uh, relationships. Actually, Crowd Alliance is a broker dealer. And they actually conduct d- uh, deals uh, compliant with SEC and Center, allowing a company to raise money for equity and ownership of their own company. CrowdCube in the UK uh, is probably one of the leading platforms uh, to probably raise around $40 million this way. And that's what's interesting that, you know, you're starting to see crowdfunding platforms that actually have a brand already saying, I like your mechanism. Even though we're in the same industry, you're focused on raising capital on a corporate level. We're going to use you guys because we like the streamlining format that you have in place. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this next year because, you know, there's an automation process that only a few companies have accomplished when you want to sell stock in your own company. And um, as I said, Seed Invest is one of them. So that's interesting when we saw that announcement happen recently. Similar to uh, master limited partnerships buying uh, – Bring getting interest in all the smaller lim, limited partnerships out there. I get that. All right, yeah. you, you know we, we're we're out of time, David. You've got events coming up. Um, how can our audience find out more of uh, more in depth information about the topics we spoke about today in your next event? Uh, well, we have a syndication educational platform called the Soho Loft. That's t h e soholoft dot com. And there are upcoming events shows that the November 13th in New York, where we had 150 people in April, will cover these topics again for family offices. So we're going to have half a dozen to a dozen family offices actually show up and talk about why they're looking at crowdfunding, why not, and what they're looking for as investors in general. So people get really excited because they get to meet uh, – these family offices that have been very difficult to build relationships with and eluded a lot of industry uh, industries because they are all, are all very comfortable in a, a very certain uh, sector. So I encourage people to, uh, you know, if they're going to be in New York or going to make a, a trip to New York, November 12th, 13th are great days to join me and learn more about what's happening both locally and internationally in the space. Great. David, thanks for being a guest today. Thank you, Michael, for having me again. My pleasure. All right, David Drake, he is the founder and chairman of the Soho Lofts Media Group. Special thanks to Victoria Global and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with more great content just for you.